Cody. We're we're gonna see when I every time I move my hands, he kind of pulls away from me. Okay. And what I have to do is I've got to make peace with this horse in his head before I go anywhere else. Okay. So you know, him and I've got to come to terms with each other where he's not afraid of me or my hands. And what you don't want to do in this situation right here, don't give him a treat, don't give him a piece of candy or sugar or apple or anything, because the good news is he doesn't nibble and he's not nosing at us, okay? You'll get horses sometimes that people have been bribing them with treats. They're driving you crazy nibbling at you. Well, to be used, what we want him to be used for, he can't be nibbling at people, all right? So he's got to stand like a gentleman like this to do what we want to do. So that's a very good place to start with this horse. So we don't have to worry about that, all right? But what I am seeing is that he's just, see how he lays his ears back when I go like that? All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out at the tip of his nose. I'll go like this. Well, a horse has got all kinds of what I call acupoints, where these are places that you can massage that will relax them. Well, this is one right here. Okay, so before I go to put a bit in his mouth and before I go to bridle him or anything, well, I got to make sure he's okay with my hands and me around his mouth, okay? So a big mistake people make is they just jam a bit in their mouth. And he picks his head up and doesn't want the bit in his mouth, and then he gets to where he can't be bridled. Well, no, this horse ought to just accept that bridle very, very, very uh, willingly, okay? So this is where it starts, right here, okay? I get him really used to my hands around his mouth. Pull his lip up. Sometimes you'll get a horse that's been at an auction. Well, he's had 50 people pick his lip up to look at his teeth to see how old he is. And they do it very brutally, and they do it rough. Well, you get the horse in here, and you go to touch his nose, and he pulls back. But I don't blame him, poor guy. You gotta remember, these horses got feelings too. And they're probably smarter than most of the people that uh, are tough on them. So I'm just gonna go like this, soften his nose. And I'm gonna maybe take, this. and then what I can do is uh, take my stick, okay? And take this end of my stick that in his mouth. And just let him get used to having something in his mouth. Okay. I'd rather put that nice little black piece of rubber in there before a nice, before a steel bit. Okay. So I'm gonna come like this. So there's a lot of benefit to this right here. We're gonna teach him to bridle softly, but we're also gonna teach him to take a dewormer too. We might as well just kill two birds with one stone. What good is it if you can't get a dewormer out? Where you get horses in here all the time. If you go to deworm them and they, they cock their hammer and they know it's time to fight. Or you get the clippers out and they know it's time to fight because somebody's been forceful with it and hurried and rushed with it. Well, no, no, no. Here's how you do it, right here. Okay. Nice, quiet, take it out. So now I'm gonna, we're gonna simulate the bit, okay? Just gonna take this stick, he got his jaw locked, okay? It's all right. And we're gonna just, that stick and hold it there like it's the bit. I'm not gonna let him chew on it, so I don't wanna go back too far. And I'm gonna pull it out. Okay. I'm gonna take it like this. 
multitasking. Yeah, I don't like picking that head up like that, but we'll get that worked out. So let's ask ourselves, okay, if we'd have just put the bit in his mouth, what would he have done? He'd have picked his head up and he would have had all types of concerns about that. So what you gotta remember in horsemanship, you always gotta break things down into little pieces. You gotta get things to where they're not so complicated. All right, so we took a little break and now we're gonna come back Kind of put my thumb in his mouth just to touch his gum to where he opens up his mouth. You know, another thing, it's a good point to mention. We took a break for a few minutes and we came back. Took me a long time to learn the value of that. He got to think about this a little bit. Okay. There. See. See how he's getting more familiar with it. He, you know, think about it. He's never had anything in his mouth, probably. So when I go to bridle him, he's going to be okay to bridle because I've just taken about five or ten minutes to do this. So, you know, while we were taking our break, I said to Brittany here, I said, you know, stuff like this people don't think about, but this is real important to him, okay? See, so we established that vertical flexion. You notice I've got my hand underneath here that when I give him pressure down, he lowers his head. Now, if I hadn't done that first, he'd have raised his head up and maybe kept on going. But all I did is gave him a little pressure down on that rope and he dropped his head. So that's why you got to know what order to do stuff here, where if I'd have stuck this in his mouth before I got vertical flexion accomplished, he'd have reared that old head up and maybe he'd have reared up on his back legs or who knows what he'd have done. But we're like, nah, nah, see there? That's all we want. That's all we want. Mouth again. See how every time it just gets a little better. See there? It's a little better. So, you know, his hauler and his bridle, that's a big part of his life from here on out. A lot of horses are, are not well behaved with the bit. It's because people put too harsh of a bit in to start with. And they didn't get him to where he's comfortable with things in his mouth. You know? So I'm kind of written and look, I'm sticking it in through the side of his mouth. There. All right, we're going to come back to that in a little bit, but now we're going to go to do something else. All right. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flag and I gotta make sure that when I work with a horse that he's not afraid of my tools. So my rope and my stick are my main tools that I use, okay? So I take my flag around here. So I take my flag and I It. I mean, I want a nice piece of silk. I don't want a string and I don't want a plastic bag like you see some people. I want a nice piece of silk like that. It's very soft. Just like that. So, I'm not trying to desensitize him like you hear some people say. It's just, that's just not a word I like to use because I want my horse to be sensible. I want him to be alert. I don't want to make him a zombie. So in my opinion, when you say the word desensitize, what that really means is I'm just making a zombie out of you. Okay. And I don't want that. I, I want him to trust me. 
I don't want to desensitize. So I'm going to take this nice soft piece of silk. I'm going to touch him everywhere. And I don't want him twitching. So I can tell Cindy's done a lot of work with this. Because he's doing real good with it. So say if you get a horse that wants to kick when you do this, you come over here on this side and you touch this foot and this leg. You condition there standing over here. So if he kicks with that leg right there, he's kicking over there and you're over here. It's really not smart to come in here like this and work this leg on this side. Now it's okay with old Cody, but you know I've had horses kick this stick out of my hand break So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take Cody and I'm going to take him and get him very comfortable with my tool. Like that. 